My brother worked for GE, and they were in the union, but during the year that they were laying them all off, six men killed themselves. My brother was one of them. You don't understand the human toll that comes along with people getting laid off. It's very emotional. Together, we will make America great again. That's right. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you. God bless America. That was a good speech. This is a portion of what used to all be industry here. This is known as 12th Street, and we used to call it the corridor. We used to make everything from tires to heavy equipment to, you know, stuff for industry and energy. I mean, these are huge buildings. Yeah, and they're some of the smaller ones, actually. How long have those been sitting there like that? Oh, decades. A lot of it's been torn down. It looked like a graveyard. It does, doesn't it? That's the story of a lot of Erie. It looks like a graveyard. When you strip better than 30,000 manufacturing jobs out of an area, this is what happens. Sorry, now I just heard you sigh. I was just thinking, I think that there's a portion of people that purposely drive a different way just so they don't have to see it. Really? Yeah, I do, I do. Um, it's very disheartening. This is for areas that experience mass layoffs. It's designed to try to stimulate... Scott Slauson has the union representing more than 3,000 GE workers in Erie, Pennsylvania. Sure, sure. Much of his day is spent consoling workers who've just lost their livelihoods. A heavy burden to bear. We don't like to see average everyday working people lose their jobs. I mean, that's, it's heartbreaking. Does it make you fearful about where manufacturing is headed? Uh, I think there's a general sense across the United States. I know up here, you know, in, in what's known as the Rust Belt states, I'd say, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a fear of what direction are we going and, and how bad is it going to get? Donald Trump came here and, and he promised a lot of people um, that he would restore jobs in the United States. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and, and people will take a desperate position, even if it's not in our best interest sometimes. That desperation stemmed from decades of economic decline, coupled with the sense that no politicians would stop the bleeding. Since its peak in the 1950s, Erie has lost nearly 30,000 manufacturing jobs. And despite being a union town that's voted blue since the Reagan years, Erie, like so many other manufacturing towns across the U.S., flipped for Trump. The middle class is disappearing. The ability to have, you know, a single job that pays the bills and, and pays for the mortgage and, and, and pays for your vehicle and puts food on the table, those days are disappearing. I think it's hard to understand, at least I didn't understand until I came to Erie. And how much of an impact this fleeing industry, these buildings, these jobs leaving, the kind of stress that puts people under. You hear about the job losses and the numbers, but until you actually see it, I don't think you have a true sense of what it has done to the community here. Uh, we're driving through Clock Hole, West 12th Street. This is my hometown. In all its plot, pothole glory. This is my daughter's volleyball practice. I was Probably laid off March of last year. Okay, so 
So you're going to get a bowl or a burrito? I don't know. I've never been here. Todd is divorced, and his daughter lives across town with her mom. For father and daughter, volleyball and dinner is their special time together. I got the corn sauce. That's good. I've watched myself, as well as friends, lose jobs all over the town. You have all these people that made, you know, 30, 40 plus dollars an hour, and they're having to apply for these jobs. They're like eight, 10, 12 dollars an hour. It's one of the most stressful times in your life. Or back in the 90s, I, I could leave one job at 7 a.m. and have another job by 8, 30, 9 o'clock that morning, literally. It's not like that anymore. I know, this year went really fast, like really fast. And you'll have your permit this summer. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah, I'll be the baby driver of the school. It's okay. Told her for like a year I'm gonna lose my job. So it kind of turned into a kind of the joke was like, you losing your job today? You lose your job yet? What do you hope for your daughter? She's 16. She's gonna be coming up here. Wow. Graduating high school. I have high hopes for her because she has high hopes. She wants to be a radiologist. Yeah, they can't outsource that, right? <laughs> right? I need a heart transplant. They're not going to ship me out someplace to get it done. Are you proud of your dad? Yeah. He always tries his best, and he's come through a lot of tough things. Like, you could see him be stressed about what he was going to do for his job or whether he was going to go into schooling or not, which was hard. Like, it's kind of hard to see a parent struggle when they're just trying to do everything they can for you. Going to different jobs just to try and be near me in life. It always makes me a priority. Is the American dream broken? It, it was. But as you can see from the election that people are trying to get it going again. You think that's really what this election was about? Yeah. I mean, because if you see who really won the election, who made the turnaround, the Rust Belt, the states that were always Democratic, now we're being overtaken by the workers who have either been outsourced, outplaced, forgot about, had their backs turned on them. They had enough. It's unique. Erie's labor force has dropped by nearly 12,000 in the last decade. The population has dipped under 100,000 people. Throughout town, you can see and feel the uncertainty. My, uh, my one economic professor, he always says, like, we're, we're very thankful that you all come to learn here, but we kind of hope that you stick around and, you, and you've used this human capital and, and what you've learned to improve Erie. I mean, he's kind of right. I mean, a lot of people, they get their degree and they walk the stage and then they'll never step foot in Erie County again. Like a lot of manufacturing towns, Erie is losing many young people. Justin, Grant, and Matt will soon graduate from college and the prospects aren't great. This is, you know, a town where there's so many generations of people. You know, you watch the population decrease here, and it's like, what, what is this town going to look like in 10 or 15 years? Exactly. My parents are both from Erie. Mom went to Villa, Dad went to Prep. You know, I would love nothing more than to have a family here and just keep trying to improve Erie. But all these businesses are leaving. It's probably going to be tough to find a job here that's, you know, good paying, so. So you think you're going to have to leave? I think so. I think that's kind of uh, inevitable, almost, you know? Hey. Oh, wow. Touchdown. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm Jamie. Hi, I'm Sean. Nice to meet you, Sean. Hi. And I'm Patrick. Patrick, nice to meet you. I'm Jamie. No. Oh, are these all the grandkids? Yeah. That's Justin. These are the identical twin grandsons. Oh my goodness. That's so cute. <laughs> the Gallaghers have seen their hometown fall into economic turmoil over three generations. This past election, they said they could no longer sit and let it continue. I've been a registered Democrat for over 50 years. 50 years? And did you vote for Donald Trump? I had to. There's so many frustrated people with the local leaders not being able to help them, that they said, we, let's, let's see what Donald Trump can do. 
He, he made these campaign promises, and one by one, he's starting to check them off the list. It is nice to see that elected leader at the national level is acting on his campaign promises. Local leaders in Erie, they don't always act on what they say they're going to act. They want to be heard. Their voices want to be heard. At some point, if I have to, to run in for office to, to see change, then, then I'll do that. If you have political ambitions. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Thanks for coming tonight. If you develop the skill of working hard at this age, you know, when you get into a job, when you get into college, you're going to be working hard just because of the habit of that throughout the season. Justin's aspirations led him to run for school board, winning his election at the age of 20. I talk to people in the community all the time as, as a board member, and, and I hear, hey, lost my job uh, with GE, I'm collecting unemployment. What, what's the tax situation going to be like this year? Or, yeah, is, is the plant going to close down in Erie? You know, do I switch businesses to, because I, I'm foreshadowing that to happen? I, I got to be like, well, I'm one guy on the, the board of nine people, and I, I hear you, I listen to the people, but it's tough, it's tough hearing those kind of things. Nick, you're not registered to vote, are you? I'm just trying to get a couple different school board candidates on the ballot this year. Can you give me my last signature when, you, when you're done? Go ahead, I can do it now. All right. The, the pressure's on these, these local leaders because voting in Donald Trump at the federal level in the White House kind of sent a message, I think, to elected officials all over the country that we let things slip this long, but now we're keeping an eye on you. There you go. Appreciate it. No I need three more Republicans. Start our first motor starter. We are in the classroom section at the Erie Institute of Technology. This is where a number of laid off workers have come to get retrained into new skills and basically get trained into jobs that they've never done before uh, in a relatively short amount of time. And what's fascinating to me is that they are all middle aged white men who I think their families are very dependent upon them working. Make sure you have that disconnect. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever think that this is what you would be doing? Well, if you would have told me three years ago that I'd be in school at 54 years old, I would have told you you were crazy. <laughs> so what made you come? Well, I lost my job a year ago yesterday, and uh, I really didn't have any options. I guess it's time to reinvent myself. Jim is married with a daughter and a five-year-old grandson. He has lived most of his life in Erie. There are a lot of people who hope jobs and manufacturing jobs come back to this area. A lot of people in this last election voted for someone they think can fix the economy. Do you think who's in office now can fix the economy? Well, I certainly hope so. I think it's our last chance because election after election is just getting worse and worse. So myself, I voted for Trump because, like I said, status quo wasn't doing it anymore. So got to take a gamble. They're just picking on him because, you know, they like to pick on him. I mean, he's, he's a target. He's, he's wide open. He asked for it. <laughs> Let's back up from that disconnect. This program has given you new hope? Oh, definitely. It changed my life. It gave me the opportunity to uh, learn a new trade. What would you have done without the program? I shudder to think about it. I mean, I would have got a job, maybe two jobs, but... I definitely would have still tried to move even without the, the schooling. Erie is definitely a sinking ship, and it'd be crazy not to get off a ship that's sinking. One thing that really kept me around as long as I did was, you know, a good job like GE, you just can't. It's hard to leave a job that you make, you know, really good money. So, but then when they laid me off, and uh, that was the decision, and so it's time to leave. I landed a job in uh, New Mexico where I'll be re relocating. Did you feel like you wouldn't be able to find a job here in Erie? Well, you could find a job here, but I would be making less money than people at Walmart. Really? Less than $10 an hour for HVAC in Erie. Just like I said, time to get out of this town.
<laughs> up on campus, I almost always look like a an executive or something, <laughs> like all, amongst the college crowds. What are you gonna do when you're done with school? Well, I guess I'm gonna try to get that job at GE, but I mean, there's there's none to apply for. And I have a couple of friends that are engineering interns, and the one has put in 40 applications. His GPA's 3.8, 3.9, and he hasn't heard back or anything. So what's he gonna do? Well, we, we've been we've been discussing about moving. <laughs> just just we always kind of throw it out there, and we'll go on to realtor.com and look up houses in Texas or then I'll get on hey why don't we move to Nashville and then we're looking up houses in Nashville grandpa how does it make you feel to hear him talk about potentially having to leave I'll tell you he adds a lot of life to my old life you know he's a really makes grandma and I feel pretty good <laughs> I'd like to see him stick around but I don't think he's going to be able to that obviously impacts him to hear you say that. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. It's tough. You got to go where the money is, though. So, I mean, if you if you can't find a job around here, you got to go elsewhere. Oh, man. First time a tear rolled down my face since Donald Trump won. <laughs> I want to see positive change. I want to see positive change for Erie County and Pennsylvania and the country. So regardless who's in office, I just want them to enact policies that will, will help Americans, help lives. Nice day today, it's gonna to be 60 degrees. House is for sale, but nobody seems to be too interested in it. They're talking about closing schools and doing away with all sports, so it's kind of hard to sell a house around here. Everything is packed, except for clothes and stuff from the kitchen, dishes. We got rid of a lot of stuff for the move. <laughs> Tucker likes to fight. He's gonna go down to New Mexico and beat up some roadrunners, I think. Come here. We're moving into an apartment. We're, we're lucky that we can take the cats, but we can't take the dog. So we're trying to find Randy a, a new forever home. I'm sure I'll find her home because she's a good girl. She doesn't do anything wrong. I figured this would be where I lived for the rest of my life, but it's not looking that way. Well, sad, but also happy because I'm starting a new life. You know, when he was running for president, it was a lot different than, you know, him being president now. And now that he's in office, I mean, it's real. And there's, you know, things that are happening and there's consequences. I anticipated there would be a lot of change. I just really, I didn't think it was going to be this fast. It's just like, it's just like too much all at once. It just doesn't seem like it's, well thought out to me, I guess, you know? But, I mean, I'm still hopeful. The biggest fear I have is that, you know, we're gonna take what was once a very proud industrial manufacturing city and, uh, you know, we're gonna go the way of Detroit. You know, we'll be filing bankruptcy, we won't be able to keep our schools open, you're gonna see abandoned building after abandoned building, and, and Erie will become a ghost town.